building a commercial inspection business takes time, effort, and money. And for most of us, being the technician in the field is the easiest part of the job. And the hardest part is remembering that you have to be a salesperson. And a salesperson is securing the business. So today I want to talk a little bit about some of the skills and techniques that you could harness to help build that sales effort and build those sales skills that help you land more inspections, do more work, and be more profitable. When you were first going through your training to be a commercial property inspector, you learn skills. Those skills were how to inspect the HVAC or how to inspect the plumbing or the electric. And there was procedures and there were, were certain effective processes that you used. Well, that translates very well to sales. Understanding that there is a skill set and that skill set's called the soft skills, and the, specifically the soft skills of sales. And those include how you communicate with your client, how you interact with them, and your ability to listen. So when we think about these soft skills, they can really be divided up uh, amongst some very honed and well-practiced elements within these soft skills. And that's what I want to spend some time with today. And let's see if we can talk about how to develop your soft skills and help you be a more effective communicator with your clients, as well as generate more effective leads. The first and most likely the most important soft skill, I believe, is the opportunity to communicate. And being very effective in your communication with your client is important. That goes all the way through your confidence as well as your empathy and how you talk to them. When you talk about the process, which you're going to have that opportunity, you're going to have to talk with confidence of, yes, this is what I do. This is what we're going to look at. This is how I am going to move through this building. But also standing back and listening to your client so that you can go, oh, well, I understand that. Sure, that's a concern that we will certainly address. And so I've not only listened to them, I am confident in my response to them, but I'm also going to bring it back to, I've heard what you said. Now let me confidently help you through the process. If you really want to think about your clients this way, it's they're also salespeople. They built a business. Whether they're selling a product, whether they're selling a service, whether they're in a commodity, whatever they're in, they have elements of sales in their day every day. And so your ability to work with them as a peer on that level is very important because they will, they, they will, they will gravitate naturally towards somebody that is very equal to them. So think about how you're communicating. That also goes to where you're communicating. So if you're answering your phone while driving down the road with your windows open, all they hear is that rush of air going past the microphone in your speaker of your car. And you keep re going, please, please repeat that. They can't, they can't possibly have any confidence in what you're going to provide when you can't take the time to effectively talk to them in an environment that's conducive towards that conversation. So think about where you're answering your phone. Are you in a hot attic? Are you up on a roof? Are you next to uh, a runway of an airport? Or are you in the front seat of your vehicle with the wind rushing across? So, so do your best 
to effectively communicate your message. Another excellent soft skill is the soft skill of teamwork. Teamwork is that that opportunity you have to look at your clients or talk to your clients on the phone and say, and yes, you are absolutely invited to participate in the inspection. They're most likely not going to. This is not like a residential inspection where the client's going to be right on your back and if you stop, they're going to hit you real quick because they just can't wait to, to hear more about that, that home. This is a commercial property inspection. The clients are busy. They're going to want to know about the property. They're going to want to know what's going on. They're going to want to be educated, but they're not going to participate to that nth level. So inviting them to the process makes them feel like you're one of them. Telling them they can bring their management team. Tell them they can, they can bring their, their maintenance team. All of those elements show that you're part of their team and you want to help them. It's opening the door. It's, it's, it's making a policy that allows them to understand their building and to know that you want to help them. That's a soft skill that once you develop and once you hone, your clients are going to rely on and understand that you're there to help them. And that's something you can incorporate right there into your phone call while you're talking to them during that interview process. Another soft skill that can be developed takes a little bit more time, but once you effectively learn this skill, and maybe you already have it, maybe you've been doing this for your entire career, it's to influence without authority. In other words, they own a company. This is their inspection. All of these things are on their side. But when you can create a, your credibility and they can... Build, you build that trust with them, and that's done through the effective communication between you and them, that all of a sudden what you say becomes authority and influence. And you're able to push them either forward or backwards or to where you need to have them be pushed. And push is, I don't want to say you're making them buy a property. I'm saying push in the in the come to your side of the table, then you have this ability in a sales technique to have them accept what you say. So, so an example for that would be, um, so I've been doing commercial inspections for almost 30 years. And in doing commercial, you know, an example of this would be, I have been providing commercial inspections to clients just like you for almost 30 years. And in properties like the one you're buying, often have conditions in the parking areas that might require some attention. So I am going to be make, I'm going to make sure as I'm walking through your parking lot. Yes, I do spend a great deal of time in the parking lot. You might not think parking lots are important, but you could have hundreds of thousands of dollars in parking lot damage. I will be paying very close attention to that. Is that okay? Is that something that you want to make sure that I understand? And then they're going to come back and they're going to go, yeah, I never thought about parking lots. And I'm very appreciative and trust that you're going to take care of parking lots because you've said that that is important to you. And if it's important to you, me, the inspector, then it's going to obviously be important to the clients. And now I'm persuading them that or, or, or building that trust to get them to listen to me. And in listening to me, they're most likely going to go with my services. Now, in looking at this, you can think that I'm dealing with some persuasion tactics. Well, I am. And in doing this, I am listening as well. I said very earlier in this that, that what we're doing 
is building the soft skills. And one of those soft skills is listening. And in listening, I'm building this understanding of their needs. I'm listening to their pain points. I'm listening to what's most important to them so that when I repeat it back, I'm demonstrating my value. I'm establishing my trust. I'm building my personal credibility either through my description of, of some of the projects I've done or, or my confidence in the systems they have in their building. And I'm allowing myself to be their problem solver. And in being a problem solver to them, that again is reinforcing their trust. So I've listened to my client on the phone and my client said that, that, uh, that they know they're buying a 35-year-old building and that the building owner that's there presently has stated that uh, some of the HVAC on the roof has been replaced. And, I, and, and my response would be, that is absolutely terrific and is part of my inspection. I will, be, I will be going on this roof and I'll be looking at those rooftop packaged units. And I'll make sure that I take and discover what the exact years of manufacture those very expensive appliances are. And I'll create a, a, a table for you, which you can rely upon as true and accurate dates. Many, many times, building owners might not have the exact dates, and they could be off for a few years. But let's do, we'll make sure that we get a good, accurate date for you. Now, on that, I've listened to my client's pain point, HVAC. I've been a problem solver by thinking about how I can help them, which is discover dates. I've told them I'm going to go on the roof and I'm going to build my credibility. They can trust me that I'll get this done. So for this, I've demonstrated my value of why they need to hire me versus somebody else. And so those are my persuasion tactics that I would use when building this portion of my sales technique. A commercial property inspector has to be confident in what they do. You can't walk into a commercial inspection and, and be afraid of the process or afraid of the building or, or not understand what's going on. We've done our research. We've looked at the building. We've walked around it, you know, possibly um, virtually through, through all kinds of different means that are available to us. So, so we know what we're getting into. This shouldn't be many surprises other than physical conditions that are present. And so our confidence that we exude during the process shows our leadership. And leadership is an absolute key to a soft skill. I, I've always used words like I and we. Uh, when, when we built this building, they're going, you built this building? Well, no, I kind of use the community we because I can project my brain into when this building was built, whether it was built 10 years ago or 110 years ago. I can project myself into that process and, and use that as a tool so that I can say, and this is the technique that was used here. And then this was what was used here. And then the clients can go, well, geez, I trust that. And I understand that. Good. And, and now I've got the confidence. But in that same texture or that same conversation, if you walk up to something in a building and you don't know what it is, Show the humility enough to, know, to tell them, yes, uh, this is something that's, uh, that's unique to this process or unique to this building. I do have a, a colleague that I can rely upon that will help us get to the bottom of this situation. 
and I would document it. I would take the picture of it. I might even bring, I might even say, you know, if, with your permission, I'm going to bring them in tomorrow and let them take a look at it. All of those things show that you're placing the client's needs first. The key is, is it's your client's the most important person and it's your leadership that understands that you can lead by example, you can lead by force, you can, you can, you can lead by a strong arm, or you can lead by humility and, and grace. And most people will gravitate towards humility and grace with a lot of confidence sprinkled into it. Now, just because you've gone through all of this effort to, to build these relationships and, and, and really work hard on these soft skills, it's important that when you're talking to whomever you're talking to and doing such an awesome job of these sales tactics, you're talking to the right person. Only you, you can carry your banner and tell your story with the vigor and importance and gravitas that's necessary to persuade somebody to purchase your services. So whether you're talking to a buyer or a seller or somebody's assistant, the real estate agent, a leasee, a leaseor, whomever you're talking to, that person has to be the decision maker. And so if a real estate agent's calling you up and saying, hey, I need, a, I need a quote on a building, awesome. But don't present your quote directly to the agent. Say, and can I have the name of the client so that I can call them directly? And talk to them about the process. Oh no, no, no! They're they're they want to they're out of country or they're they need to be. Well, okay, I understand that, um, but it's really important. Unless you're the decision maker on this process, I really need to talk to the person that's going to make the decisions because because there are certain things that we need to talk about to make sure that I meet all their expectations. Because again, we've talked about this in other in in, in other arenas. Maybe there's an assistant calling you, and that assistant's not going to go carry your banner over to their boss and say, hey, you got to use this guy. This person was great. Or you got to use her. She was fabulous. Whatever it is, you need to talk to the person that's the most important, and that's the person that's purchasing the building. Now, none of what we've talked about in the sales technique will work if your fees are way out of line. Many times you'll never know your fees are out of line unless your client tells you they're way out of line. But establishing your fees is something you should do long before the phone ever rings. And we have created many, many, many resources to help you with establishing fees. Some of which include our course how to determine inspection prices and write proposals. This course goes through all of the various small steps to help you successfully navigate developing fees. This includes types of properties, mystery shopping or inquiring about other potential uh, competition in your marketplaces pricing, it has a little background on the industry. And then we talk about physically pricing various types of buildings, whether they're warehouses or office spaces, multifamily or lodging. And so take a look at this course because I think it's going to be a, a huge tool to helping you bridge that gap and being more successful. So once you've reviewed that course or taken the course and understand all those various concepts, then you can start thinking about how you're going to project or present or provide your fees to the client. 
And this is where all of those soft skills that you developed and honed and have been practicing really come into bear. Again, that course that we have, Online Freedom Members, talks about market research. It talks about mystery shopping. You can also talk to colleagues. Getting to know your market is probably the most important thing with establishing market research because you know the neighborhoods. You know those areas of your community and what's hot, what's not, what the going rate is. You might have one side of town that could be half the price of the other side of town. And if you were going to go to the, the one side of town and charge your typical fees, that might not go over as well as the other side of town. I don't know. Every community, every marketplace is going to be different. And when you're looking at your fee structure and you're looking at these projects and dealing with the sales skills, this course will go into determining your fee structure, which includes hourly, square footage, a flat fee, percent of, percent of sale, or a combination of possibly hourly and square foot. So I, I, look, I, I really encourage everybody to take a look at that course, uh, as well as all the other information we have available on our website. But then now it's time. It's time to take that price, that fee that you've, de you've developed so diligently in your research process. And you got to take those soft skills that you've de developed and marry them and put them together for your clients so that they have an opportunity to be convinced that you are the right inspector for them. Now, one of the challenges we do have is when you present your fees, many times they'll go over without an issue. Yep, awesome, great. When can we do this? But there will be those occasions that your fee is going to be met with an objection. Oh, yeah, and potentially some negotiations. Oh, well, uh, that, that's just not going to work. Would you do it for? And so you're going to need to have that confidence to be able to turn them around. And that's done through very, very effective communication. Now, I've listened to my client through the entire process. I might have even long before I've presented my fee, baited a hook a little bit, said, well, you know, this is great. I mean, I understand your, I understand your concerns. Now, what is your expectation for an inspection fee on a process, on a project like this? I'm not afraid to say that. Now they might say, well, my, I'm expecting $30,000. Well, if you said, well, I'm going to be 21, they're going to, wow, this is great. I just saved $9,000 in my mind. You don't, you're not going to get an objection. But if they have this, this expectation that the, the fee for this inspection might be something in the neighborhood of a residential inspection, you know, in this, the residence might be 3,000 square foot, and this is a 30,000 square foot building. You need to set that stage, and you need to, to work on those. So, be, you know, I want to, I, I, and so when I do, when I present my fees, it is I went back and I walk them through the entire inspection process to the point. I wasn't going to give them an opportunity to object. So let me let me let me pass you through that. So when we do this inspection for you, we are going to start with a preliminary walkthrough on the outside of the building and the inside of the building. We'll begin on the roof. I'll make sure we walk the entire roof. I saw there was a hatch access over on the north side. We'll walk the roof. I'll give you a very good determination of what I see on the roof. 
We'll do the HVAC while we're up there. I know you've got a small commissary restaurant in the back. We'll make sure we deal with the makeup air as well as the exhaust air. When we get done with the roof, we're going to start in the inside. I'm going to do a thorough inventory of all the electric panels, transformers, switch gear, and anything else you might have in this building. I know we're dealing with heavy electric. I saw on the listing sheet you've got you've got 1,200 amps of power. So we'll we'll take a, we'll take a very good look at that. We'll go through the interior, looking at all of the restrooms, the plumbing. We're going to verify uh, your backflow preventers present as well as looking for any structural, visual structural deficiencies that might be present. Is there anything I'm missing that you have concerns with? No? Excellent. Well, for that, my fee will be X. Now, in that case, I've effectively told them what I'm going to provide them. They've agreed that that's what I'm going to provide them. And then I've given them the price. Now, they can either see value or not see value. There's going to be shoppers. And so that's when you need to turn them around. Well, you know, it, it, oh, so that price is, so what were you thinking? Well, in all honesty, I don't know that I'm able to do that for, for that price. But, you know, one of the things you could consider, I know all of the HVAC in this building you've reported to be new. So if you'd like... I can exclude all of the HVAC on this building. So, so in other words, I'll go up on the roof, just do the roof, I'll come off the roof, and but I'm going to exclude the HVAC, and I can do it for that other price. Does that sound good? Then let's book this for Thursday. So then I've taken their one objection, their price. I've drawn a line across, and that's what we have the opportunity in a commercial inspection, is to create a proposal based on the agreed project. And I'll write a proposal up that specifically says, I'm excluding all HVAC from this project. And the clients agreed to that price. Now, the other thing you got to think about are just the pure price shoppers. And that's something I think we need to talk about. One of the things I think about when I think about price shopping is the industry in which I'm working in. I might be one of only three or five truly commercial-driven inspectors in my market. But there might be dozens of of residential inspectors in my market that have a tagline on their on the, on their website that says commercial. I know they don't use the Comsop. I know that they're not devoting much of their time to doing commercial, and I, so, so that means their skills probably aren't where mine are. And so I've got enough confidence to tell my clients and say, well, this is my price. Um, I know you're going to be shopping around, and I, I appreciate that. I don't do anything without shopping. But mindful that as you're shopping around, I am a member of the com Certified Commercial Property Inspectors Association. This is my focus. I do commercial inspections. I do commercial inspections almost every day of the week. And you might go out and find other inspectors that might be just a little less expensive, possibly, than me. But are they possessing the same experience or using the same standards that I am? And so that's something for you to consider as you're shopping around, is make sure that you're looking at a true comparison. We don't want to have you have the fate of this building by means of your education and your, your, your knowledge that you're going to garner from this inspection in the hands of somebody that's, a, that's what we would describe as, as a dabbler or somebody that does not do this with the, uh, with, with the precision and the expertise that I will have. Now, that's the confidence that I'm showing. That's that soft skill coming back out that I'm trying to deal with. Another confidence tactic that you could use 
that I've used so often is the confidence in my schedule. So it's like a win-win. I don't want to talk about discounting. I don't want to talk about, about, well, I've come down a little bit. But I always want to make my clients think that I am needed. I'm needed all over the place. I am busy. So they're calling on a, on a Wednesday, for instance. I'm booked out this week, but I can provide this inspection on Tuesday. So that tells the client that, you know, or, or, or at least baits the client to thinking that I'm a very sought after inspector. And Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm completely booked out. But I can do this on Tuesday. I need to get them on the calendar because I need this done. Or you could go, my fee is $2,500 for this project. I'm available Tuesday. So what time works best for you? I didn't give them the, the opportunity to say $2,500 is negotiable. I said, my fee is $2,500 for this project. I'm available on Tuesday. Their, their decision was time, not money. Time, not money. So I'm using the time as a technique or the confidence that my $2,500 fee was good and just and accurate and fair. So at the end of the day, I really try to be fair in my fees. I try not to be the highest in the market. I try not to be the lowest in the market. I try to be fair to what I believe my time for that, for that project and the effort was worth. Now, if you get a client, and I'm just thinking out, uh, off the top of my head, that if I get a client that uh, doesn't like 2500 so, oh, oh, say, well, at $2,200 on Monday, would 9 o'clock be good for you? So I knew I had a hole in my schedule on Monday at 9. I gave them a $300 something uh, break, which I hate negotiating. I hate that because it's my money I'm throwing away. But I landed an inspection on Monday at the time where I wanted it, which is 9 o'clock. So they won a little bit. I won a little bit. And on top of that, I got the inspection. I got an opportunity to meet a new client. I got an opportunity for them to have infinite trust in me because they know other people. I got an opportunity to possibly meet a couple of real estate agents that will see how I work and how competent and confident I am in my process. And I'm going to treat that $300 as a marketing expense because I'm meeting all these people and I'm going to have an opportunity to do work for them in the future. So that's what I'm dealing with with my, with my sales technique on showing my confidence when presenting either the time or the fee. So, by all means, I have to encourage you to follow some of those steps that we've laid out. We've built that roadmap to follow the call, and we're dealing with that small part of the roadmap which includes that interview process and presenting your fees. Listen, let the client talk to you. The client's going to tell you their pain points. The client's going to tell you their concerns. The client's going to tell you their expectations. The client will probably tell you what they expect to pay, if not how they expect to pay, if not what process they go into this so that you can turn it around. And if you tell them everything they just told you back to them in, in a manner that educates them, then they can't help but agree to everything you're presenting. So I'm encouraging you to check out our website. We have this article and many more available to you to help you in the sales and the marketing, as well as links to that course here at uh, in our comments. 
Till next time, this is Rob Klaus for Building Your Business. 